Okay. Day six. Day six is one page of notes. This will be on the test. Um, we do have an activity to cover today. If you were absent last class, I need you to make up your quiz today. The other thing that I'll say is this. I did update Skyward. There's a lot of you, not a lot, there's some of you that didn't turn in homework. I will accept homework today. Anything after today, I'm not going to accept homework because it's already late. Um, but today's notes, as we finish them, there is an activity over it. The activity, you won't be tested over that. But up into everything that we've done thus far in this unit, including this page that I'm about to show you, that's going to be on the test. Okay? And FYI, the test is not next class that I see you, which is going to be on Friday. Your test will be when? Tuesday. Okay? So here we go. It is converting between polar and rectangular back and forth. Okay, you ready? Reminder, polar looks at the angle, and then you take the step of however far R says to. For instance, look at 120. Okay, 120 is this angle that I'm going to look at, which is like over here. And I'm going to take the step of just three. So from the center, I will do one, two, three. That is P. Okay, do a couple more. This angle is 60, which is here. And I'm going to take the step of four. So one, two, three, I'm at Q. Let's do one with a negative R so we don't forget. <laughs> Actually, these don't have negative R's. Um, I'll do it with a negative angle, though. So negative 60 degrees would face downward. Because again, you're rotating from zero degrees. So from here, you rotate down negative 60, and then you're going to take a step of two, which is one, two, and that's where S lies. So these degrees, they aren't polar degrees, they're normal? No, yeah, correct. These are not polar, and these, that's a really good question. These are not bearing degrees. These aren't bearing. These are rectangular degrees. Okay? So here is zero. Okay? Very good timing on that question, too. What we're learning today is how to convert to a normal xy graph, something that you've been used to since Algebra 1. So if this is the r value, otherwise the radius, the way I want you to look at this is like the magnitude. So look, you have, you've been doing this now for a while, you have an x component, you have a y component, and if you do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, this would give you the magnitude. You've been doing this with vectors all day, okay? The magnitude is this radius. And how do you get the x and the y from this? Remember the chart that we've been doing as far as how do you get the x and y components? Let me write this off to the side. It said that you have a magnitude here, you have a directional angle here, and you have the vector components here. And I said this was 3. And the direction was 120. How did you get these? Do you remember? Just multiply, right? So you do 3 times the cosine of 120. That will give you x. And then 3 times the sine of 120. That gives you y. That's how you convert from polar to rectangular. The same thing. You're going to say 3 times the cosine of 120 to get that x. And 3 times the sine of 120 to get that y. What's the difference then? What's the difference that you see that, that this is doing that we that is different than what we've been doing? What's the difference? It's subtle but important. No, but good, good try. Well, I see what you're saying. Yeah, the polar is round, and these are coordinates. So the polar is the round graph, right? And these are just the regular x and y graph. And we're going to change from that to that. What is it? Uh, on the polar coordinates and the yep, that's it. When we do vectors, we're vectors. It's the actual, like a 1.5, a negative 1.5 comma 2.6 vector looks like this. Um, negative 1.5. X-wise and 2.6 looks something like that. 
Negative x, positive y, second quadrant. But look, like Evelyn said, these are parentheses. So it's not what you see in red. What is this going to be? Just the point. You think, look at this. If I were to create this as an x, y graph, negative 1.5 is about right here. And then go y, y is 2.5, which is about 1, 2.5 is about here. So if I piece those two together, the point is P. You all with me? Parentheses, point. Parentheses, point. The V's are the vectors. We good? Which is the line. What are you, what are you gonna run today? You're gonna run the line. You're gonna run the route. Okay, just a straight line out from the components that I give you. And look at Q. 460 is here, and if I were to look at this like a Y, X, regular, X, Y graph, 2 is right here. Look, 1, 2. 3.6 is 1, 2, 3, and then 0.6 is about here. So if I looked at it just like Algebra 1, that's where the point would lie. That's basic, right? That's pretty easy. Now, to go from rectangular to polar, it's a little bit weird, but I mean, it's still not bad. Let's do this. I come from a point. What is it that I did with those two numbers in order to get this? Yep, add the squares and square root. So what I did was I did one, so I did this one right here, one squared plus this one, negative one squared, make sure the negative's on the inside, and square root. That's how you get r, because r is the same as the magnitude. You with me? r is the same as the length of a hypotenuse of that right triangle. That's the strength, that's the magnitude, the distance, the length, however you want to look at it, depends on the context. And then how do you think they get negative 45. Arc tangent. So this is going to be the arc tangent of negative 1 over 1, which is y over x. Can someone tell me what quadrant this point would lie in? 4. So if it lies in quadrant 4, what do you do? Nothing. Nothing. So whatever you get here in your calculator, that's what you're going to put right here as far as your angle goes. When do you add 180? We talked about this last time. In 2 and 3. In 2 and 3, yeah. So if you're in 2 and 3, those are when you add 180. Here, you leave it alone. Whatever it is, that's what it is. Yeah. Either one, it will work. So let's say you get a negative answer. When you add 180, you're going to get the same as if you did 180 plus that negative. Okay, and let's look at the points, guys. Here we go. So we know G, or sorry, C, is at one negative one, which is right there. So, so that you could tell the axis a little bit better. Here's the x axis. Here's the y axis. And one negative one is at C. Okay, but you're not going to look at that on the test. I mean, the test is not that easy. You're going to be having to come up with this. I'm going to give you one negative one, and I want you to, or vice versa, I want you to tell me what are the polar coordinates. So remember, the magnitude is just you just take the square roots, square root of the sum of the squares, and then arc tangent. Make sure you know what quadrant you're in. That's it. Because look, I could look at this. And this, uh, we'll run some of these today, too, where I'll give you this. I'm like, all right, polar coordinates. Here we go. And I, I could say something like 10, something that looks like this. I'll say like 10, 45 degrees. So that means we're both facing forward, okay? So, like, I'll be right here, and this is you. And I'll say 10, 45 degrees. That means you're going to aim at a 45 degrees. And whenever you get to like 10 feet, that's when I'm going to throw the ball, and you should turn around toward your right and be able to catch it. Cool. Yeah? So will the whole thing be wrong if you don't put the parentheses in with the arrows? Yeah. Not the whole 
thing, I'll take two points off probably. So just make sure that you're understanding position is polar, right? And vectors are that line that you've traveled. That should be kind of a big old overarching light bulb that's been going off recently. Any questions? Okay, so the last thing is we're going to go through a Nearpod activity here in just a bit. We're going to familiarize with the second page. There are some questions, it's not for a grade, but there's some questions just to see, just for fun, how well you can do as far as obtaining what these different types of graphs. If you were, by some reason, I never thought I'd major in math um, when I was sitting where you're sitting right now, but if for some reason you were ever to need math, this is something cool to know like for future math by count too. Any questions? Okay. So let's go to, um, I want you to go to your Chromebook and I want you to find nearpod.com. Okay. And nearpod.com, we're going to do this one right here. Live session. This session is active. Do you want to resume it? No. And I want you to put that in, please. Go to nearpod.com. We've done this before. That's the code that I want you to input, and then we'll start here in just a bit. Let me pause the video. All right. So here comes polar equations. And we're going to do an exploration with circles. Check it out. Your equation is A times the cosine of theta. And look, if A is 1, that's the circle. Check it out. If A is 2, the circle's there. If A is, let's say, 6, the circle's there. Do you see what's going on? Now look, let's play this. As the circle gets smaller, A is getting smaller. Think of A like a vertical stretch. In this case, it's cosine, which is x. It's a horizontal. When I go to the left, boom, it's negative A. Negative, 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 zero. Positive, 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 zero. Negative, you know what I mean? So think of it like a stretch, if you will. Now, that's cosine going x and y. Let's pause that. Sine, ooh, that's pretty good. Let me do this one, that's negative eight. Oh, I gotta play it. There you go. So, positive, 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 zero, and then negative, 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 so on and so forth. But it's sine, so it's going to be y and x. What did I say? Eight, negative eight. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, that was horrible. All right. So anyway, so if you had them both going at the same time, you have cool magic. Oh, look at that! They're both at the same time. Oh, I am recording this. Anyway, so Judd's going to laugh at this. Shout out, Judd. Um, that's <laughs> that's going to be your circles. You know with me? All right, here we go. Ready? Now, I won't record this, but now let's see what you can do. So you're going to, oh, actually, let's just verbalize this. What are the similarities and differences, guys, between the circles created by, by this and this. You could you don't have to write it, just say it. What are the similarities that you saw? A is what? A X was horizontal? Or A cosine was horizontal? And B sine was like And B sine was vertical. So A and B are basically those <laughs> numbers as far as the stretch. <laughs> Wait, uh, come on. Oh, yeah, you can. Hey. Anyone else wants to answer? Sure, to Nothing inappropriate. Oh, my gosh, Walter. The, oh, look at them. One cosine change on the axis. One is another yeah. sine change on the <laughs> y-axis. <laughs> Say hi to Judd. Okay. Here we go. Let's move on. Let's go to polar rose exploration. Okay. This is cool. A. Okay. Oh, whoa. What's up? So there's oh, 
Nothing's changed. Same thing. Because B is what oh. right now? What's B? Nothing. B is 1. But if I make B, like, ooh, what's up? You see that? B is 2. You'll see this? If B is 3, If you have four, whoa, what is going on? All kinds of crazy stuff. Wow. Right? But look, we got to do full integers. There we go. That's cleaning it up. How many rose petals do you see? Eight. So when it was three, how many did we see? Three. Three. So odd numbers. It is what you see. You with me? So three, you see three. Four, you saw eight. How many do you think you'll see with five? A lot. Five. five. Which is a lot. <laughs> and how about six? How many do you think you'll see with Twelve. six? Twelve. So evens are the double, and any odds is going to be exactly how many petals it will have. And when you play it together, Alright, so let's do the other one. So there's the Y one. When I play it. <laughs> Is B hurting your eyes? Yeah. Let me see if I can start, stop B right at three. Three, 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 three. Oh, that was nice. Um, three. Whatever that means. And then D, we'll go to. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Shout out to Eric. All right, five. You're welcome, John. <laughs> How's that? That's pretty cool, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. That's actually it. kind of rewarding. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, it yeah. looks like the flower is... You need to offset them. Oh, them? look. It's Look at the purple flower. 45 degrees-ish. And then zero. And then 90 degrees. Because here it's going to be a positive and a negative with the with the A and C values, that it's like reflecting. Here it was like looking over here. But right on the next one, it's going to look like the other one. So this one right here, this red one, when it flips, is going to come over here. See? Do you see it? And the purple one. Yep. It's got that negative reflection, not across the x-axis, but across the pole. All right, let's go to, this is actually fun. I like this. All right, let's see how you do. Again, this is not for a grade, so don't freak out. Let's see. Oh, cover cover your names? All right, there you go. No, cover our names. There you go. Let's go for it. Oh, I'll stop the view. Thank you. Our last shape are limousons. No, again, anything on this activity is not going to be on the test. It's just for All right, check that out. Since we love math so much, we got a little heart. That's a heart. What? I'm recording. It's not a butt crack. It's not a butt crack. It is. It is a limousine. So look. Dude, hey. So that's a. This is B. Now look. <laughs> depending on what B is doing, depending on what A is doing, it's a loop. And the loop is when I'm looking at it from a different angle, it doesn't go as far to the other direction as if I was rotating it the other direction. Why does not have a view and you've got disappeared? Because it depends on the value of B. So, ready? So look. See, if B is zero, there's not going to be a loop. Look at that. A is just showing you what the radius is. This is like R equals. Look, look, look. R equals two. That's a radius of two. R equals five. Radius of five. R equals negative five. Whoops. 
It's still going to be 5 because that's the length of the radius. It's just rotating the other direction. Cool? So it's almost like that absolute value of whatever this is. If this is zeroed out, the absolute value of that A value is going to tell you what the radius is. Cool? And then over here you have the same, but you have it Y-wise. So whenever you're doing it, haha, <laughs> almost fun. So anyway, there you go. And then if I make the loop, see the loop. Thank you, Eric. 